I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're holding our monthly tech meet at my shop. Today we're going to be working on a silver cloud differential. This comes out of actually a P5, but it's the same as this uh, cloud 3. All right, guys. There's the, they call this the uh, final drive. Drive shaft goes to the engine and transmission and spins. Your axles come out here and spin this way. Uh, it is not a um, um, limited slip or positive traction, so you can turn one axle one way and it'll make the other one go the opposite way. And the reason for that is for going around turns so your tires don't scrub. So this one came in, it's, it's out of that P5 over there. It's noisy um, on the car. Um, in combination, it has an axle that's bad. The, the, the bearing is bad, that's noisy too. But I'm gonna take this apart and show you how it comes apart. These are not that hard to do. I've, I've had a lot of people say, you, you can't set these up right, they'll never be right, they'll make noise and all that. And I did one on a Cloud One last year. And it just had noisy bearings. You know, you, the gears will wear a bit, but not much. They're pretty hard. Uh, so everyone said in the industry, you can't, you can't fix it. It's gonna, it's not gonna work. So all I did was change the bearings and seals, and it worked beautifully. So don't believe everything you hear. Um, this up here, this this can cause some like these. These have two seals out here. They're leather from the factory. Even the new ones you buy now are leather. So if you want to even have a chance of them working, you have to soak them in oil before you install them so they get soft again. Uh, there's a breather up here, and as you can see, it gets a lot of grime around here. If this plugs up, the differential gets pretty hot. It's got a lot of force in there. These don't hold but a pint and a half of oil, so there's not much cooling effect there. So the, the oil expands and contracts. So when they get hot, you gotta let that extra air out. Otherwise, it's going to come out the seals, and that's what you see a lot on these, is they leak out these side seals. Sometimes out the pinion, but generally it's out the side seals. And if this is blocked up, which it's probably not, it's, it's got a little cap on it, we'll take it off. Um, What's the fluid that's leaking out? It's a 90-weight gear oil. It's just gear oil. I'm going to use a 90-weight in this. So I'm going to start pulling some bolts off, and we'll look at stuff. So. As you can see, they were not shy about hardware. Uh, and uh, we were talking, Dave, Dave was telling me that the factory called it stitching. They stitch them together with bolts. And then Ray comes in and says, they, they did a lot of stitching on that one. And so it's kind of funny. And the axle tubes, which are big tubes that come off, use every one of those bolts. Oh, God. <laughs> they use every one of those bolts. It's, um, Couldn't they get by with less? Well. There's a lot of things they could have done, but they didn't, did they? So, anyways. At the, at the age of the Silver Ghost, there are 24 bolts that hold the middle section of the torque tube together. And the story is that someone asked him why he used 24, and he said, because 25 wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. So I like to cheat on this stuff. Uh, I don't like to look at the manual usually. I've had a couple of them apart. Um, and uh, I'm just going to start taking bolts off. Some of these, as you can see by this uh, design here, it's got the web here and it's got this, these other webs here. These go all the way through. Not all of them do, you'll see. And uh, I think there's reasons for it. Once we get inside, you'll see, especially up front, because there's a big section in there that holds the pinion. And these old bolts and nuts that get rusty and grimy, they like to stick in your socket. Oh. So the easiest way to get them out is just to screw your bolt back in. So there will only be one cause for the problem that's in there, you're not going to open it and have surprises, right? Anytime you open up something this old, there can be surprises. But I don't anticipate any. This one was, was making a howling noise that I could hear, and it was, it was happening 
you get up to about road speed, 40 to 50 miles an hour, and you could give it some gas, and it'd make noise, and you back off and go away, give it gas back and forth. And that's called feathering, and it's generally pinion bearing that causes that. Because this right here, this pinion, once you get in there, you'll see, that takes a lot of force. It's got two bearings that hold it, so when you're cranking it, it's pushing against a big gear out here, and that big gear makes it want to push off to the side. Which car is it on? Sorry? Which gear is it on? I don't know the history. Other, I know a little bit about the car. It is uh, the only Hooper Phantom 5 built, 1959. Uh, yeah, it's very unusual looking. Uh, no, this is a lot bigger than a regular cloud. Let's see. Um, and the guys that bought it, they've been trying to buy it for a long time, and they finally had an opportunity. It was made for a car show, I believe. It's unique, without a doubt. It's been here two months, and we finally get to work on it. Are those bolts aluminum? The bolts aren't, no. Case should be. I don't know too many bolts that are alone. Okay. That does not go through. Now just think about when they built these things, how much machining goes into something like this. All these pieces have got to fit together very precise, and uh, all these holes have got to be drilled and threaded and be perfect, right? So you can take a part off the shelf and it'll fit on any car. That was a big deal back in the, when cars were in their infancy, from what I've read. And they learned it from like a, a gun manufacturer, right? Browning, was it Browning? I forget which it was, but they were the first Colt. ones to have interchangeable parts. Right. Colt? Is that who it was? Well, it Smith and Wesson, but... Okay, that's that. Segue into his comment at the, at the uh, concourse this year. I was at Jeff the day the other day, and uh, made a comment that a '57 Chevrolet had about 12,000 parts. A '57 Cloud had about 55,000. <laughs> this is part of the reason why right here. <clears throat> Another interesting fact about the '57 Bel Air, all the different variants. Uh, from my reading, when Rolls Royce hit 100 years. <clears throat> They built 150,000 cars, I think, total in 100 years. And Chevrolet in 1957, all the 50 or the 57 Bel Airs. So that meant all the different variations. They built 750,000 in one year of just Bel Airs, not total production. But of course, you can do that when there's, there's you know so many fewer parts. And the quality is obviously not the same. Common job people no, come in to ask on this. Not very often. Uh, if you want to replace the seals on here, then you got to take it apart. Okay, because they come from the inside. One side you can do without it doing it, but this one comes from the inside, so you got to have it out. And 
one of the reasons I didn't have any problems with that uh, differential is because this is the side you adjust it. You adjust it in and out, the mesh on the gears, and I don't disturb that. So if you just replace it with the same size bearing, you're pretty good off, especially on an old tire one. You can unscrew this, but then you're just opening up a can of worms, and they're really hard to get out unless you have that special tool that fits in there. You won't mess them up. Do you so, have that tool? Hmm? No, I do not. You got one more on this side. I do? The bottom. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.